Hi, in this video, I'm going to share my experience how to fix the green screen of death for Commodore Amiga A500. I'm repairing this old Commodore Amiga A500. Most commonly, the green screen issue is caused by a problem with the random access memory. Amiga has a huge community and there are a lot of resources for troubleshooting as well as a lot of open source hardware projects for add-on boards. And if you need a high quality printed circuit board, visit the website of our sponsor, PCBWay.com. Furthermore, PCBWay also offers additional services such as assembly, CNC, 3D printing and metal sheet fabrication. The shared project directory contains a lot of projects including for Commodore Amiga that you can order with a single click. Visit PCBWay.com to explore and learn more. Commodore Amiga A500 is a home computer that was released on the market in 1987. It was discontinued five years later in 1992. Back in the days, Commodore Amiga was not popular here in Bulgaria. Therefore, recently I purchased several units and imported them from Germany. This unit was in the worst condition. It was not booting at all, so I had to fix it and hopefully later on I will do some retro brighting on it. Let me demonstrate you the problem with the green screen of death for my Amiga. I have already disassembled the computer and took off the main printed circuit board. I have connected a keyboard to the main PCB. I'm also using Commodore A520 to get a video signal in the antenna input of my TV. As soon as I turn on the power supply, my Amiga tries to boot but all I get is a green screen. The green screen indicates a RAM problem and there are many things that might have gone wrong. Usually it's a problem of DRAM, Fat Angus or Gary. If you have an oscilloscope or a logic analyzer, you can try to detect the faulty RAM chip. There are excellent uh, long videos by Adrian Digital Basement and Jan Berra which explain this approach in details. Start the troubleshooting from Fat Angus. Make sure that the chip fits well into its socket. For an Amiga A500 with 512 kilobytes of RAM, make sure that pins 1 and 2 are connected on Jumper 2. Jumper 2 controls where expansion RAM maps to either chip or slow RAM. After that, have a look at Jumper JP7A. It allows you to enable or disable expansion RAM. Make sure that you don't have any expansion RAM and that uh, pins 1 and 2 of the jumper are connected. Out of the factory, Commodore Amiga A500 came with sockets for most of the chips. But unfortunately, the RAM chips are directly soldered on the printed circuit board. This computer is more than 30 years old, so sooner or later the RAM will fail. It's not the question is it going to fail, but when is it going to fail? So, based on my humble opinion, it's a good idea to rework the printed circuit board and put sockets for the RAM chips. I have already desoldered the 40 RAM chip and soldered a socket on its place. Thanks to the magic of video editing, we are going directly to the step where I replace the chips. I got lucky and the first chip that I desoldered was actually the 40 chip. So this was a pretty straightforward repair for me. In the meantime, I have ordered more sockets, they should be delivered soon and in near future, probably I'll do the PCB rework for the rest of the chips. The repair was successful and my Commodore Amiga A500 now boots. I'm going to perform a memory test using the Amiga test kit. I have removed the original floppy drive. Instead of using a floppy disk, I'm going to use OpenFlops. OpenFlops is an open source hardware floppy disk drive emulator. The test application properly detected half of a megabyte for the RAM memory. 
As I mentioned, I bought this Commodore Amiga A500 as a second-hand item and I imported it from Germany, so I don't have an idea about the history of this particular unit. There were some hardware modifications done by the previous owner for extending the RAM to 1 MB. I wasn't sure if the problem was in this hardware modification, therefore the first thing that I did before starting the repair was actually to remove all of the do-it-yourself modifications. Now I have the computer working properly with 512 uh, kilobytes of RAM, so probably later on I'll do an upgrade to 1 megabyte. By the way, I also have an expansion card for more RAM in the trapdoor, probably I'll cover it in a separate video. Here is a quick demonstration of a normal boot of the repaired Commodore Amiga 500. This time I haven't loaded any floppy disks, so we'll get the standard screen. By the way, similar approach for fixing the green screen can be done also on Commodore Amiga A500+. Plus. The Plus model featured minor changes to the motherboard to make it cheaper to produce than the original A500, which I used in this video. Let's wrap up this video with some conclusions. The green screen on Commodore Amiga A500s is most commonly caused by problems with their RAM chips. If you run into such a problem, first check Jumper 2 and Jumper 7, after that make sure that, that the Angus chip is in place and finally, if nothing else happens, proceed with uh, changing the RAM chips. I highly recommend you to do a rework of the printed circuit board of Commodore Amiga A500 and to put sockets for the RAM chips. This will help you to easily change them in future. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you find it useful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Stay tuned for new videos.